Bitcoin stair-stepping, no, tiptoeing its way to this critical level. Welcome back to Crown's Crypto Cave, and Bitcoin appears to be on the verge of a pretty momentous move over here. I want to follow up on yesterday's uh, analysis as we did hit the upside move or the trigger for the upside move. Now, the name of the game is follow through, of course, align along with critical points that are going to outline risk reward scenarios. Anyways, on top of that, I do want to say that I will be on Twitch today, or at least hopefully I'll be on Twitch today. I think I figured out the issue. I do apologize for the false alarm yesterday with putting up a stream and then realizing that my microphone wasn't going to work. Fuck. Oh well, I'm 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 in the process of figuring out a completely new solution overall, but I think I have a good enough one at least working for today. So perhaps a little bit later, uh, somewhere right around like you know noon uh, for the what is it uh, the UTC time, the the one that goes on in England. Uh, that one that that should be around the time that we start. I just need to eat some food, get a new, get some new materials, and uh, and go to the, and have a little bit of a gym session as well, perhaps in the interim. Anyways, on top of that, I do want to say, what else do I want to say? Um, yeah, let's talk about some cryptocurrency analysis. Anyways, Crown Trading application right here in front of your very face. It can be found at app.crowntrading.net. It's free. We made it for, well, actually, we made it for ourselves, but we made it free for everyone else to use. And with that said, we do see that the open interest finally getting above that critical level that we spoke about yesterday. So this really helps confirm the next sort of phase of the mark cycle. We've been looking at it kind of held below that $700 million marker. Now seeing it jump up more than $100 million actually from yesterday to today. We saw it even boost up to about $820 million at its at its uh, at its height and that's really going to help kind of well round out the analysis and pull everything together which we'll get into in just a little bit over here now more importantly or maybe just as important we do see that the bitcoin dominance legging up as we said was very likely as well i do still think that this has more more upside to go i think that we will be heading up to 70 percent and beyond which means that most altcoins versus toshis are going to get absolutely cream by boo cake style <laughs> which 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 doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to get hurt versus us dollar if bitcoin does well well here during uh versus is the US dollar. I would imagine that they're going to do on the whole mostly well as well. However, if Bitcoin does go down, well, they're going to get hit or hurt very likely on the ratio and versus US dollar. So keep an eye out for that as it does not necessarily imply direction with US dollar, but does imply direction versus the Bitcoin parent, of course. Looking at the crypto fear and greed index, it is the highest that it's been in like the last month and a half to two months, ticking out of 49, officially neutral-ish to be fair. And, uh, and we're finally starting to see this fall through with price action. So again, just further confirming the overall phase of the Mark Zucker that we are in bitcoin continues to climb the wall of worry as it is so with that said let's get on over into the actual price action analysis charts and what do you know it looks like an uptrend on a daily it looks pretty damn good bitcoin coming back filling very constructive rally i really really like this type of price action and this is overall good i do believe now of course this always comes with contingency because if you've been trading long enough you know that anything can fucking happen and <laughs> and you need to have an area where the whole analysis starts to change around and because of this nice comeback and fill right in over here which is actually probably a bonus module that I should do at some point just because it's it, it's a concept that most people probably intrinsically know but it would be good to put some English words on it anyways uh, Bitcoin coming back test this area right here and then boom nice nice move off the retest more importantly we are maintaining the uptrend and this also looks a lot more like do you want to call it a cup and handle do you want to call it an ascending triangle do you want to call it an uptrend perhaps well it's you could make the case for all of those I've been looking at it as an ascending triangle However, if you're looking at this as a cup and handle, or if you're looking at it as just constructive rally, I would agree more or less. But that comes about with a critical point. The only real value in TA in technical analysis is if you like Jesus toast and hocus pocus. No, it's it, it's so that we can define areas that negate our trading ideas, giving a statistical edge over time. And where do, where where do we have a very natural one right now? Well, the last local low. And what do you know? The last local low put in right here, right on a closing basis, 9150ish region which is exactly where that critical point was from yesterday's analysis so a bitcoin coming back down at testing former support as as or sorry testing former resistance now as support good constructive and coming back down even again in this last four hour or this current four hour dildo 
uh, testing this this current region. And yes, I do essentially remain with the same sort of target overall for the short term and medium term move, which can bring us up to about the 97 to 9800 ish level back around here, which at this price point is about a $400, $500 move at a $9,000 price point. Again, pretty damn good overall as that's, you know, five to 8% I'd imagine doing some bad mental maths. Anyways, because this is actually even more constructive now, we can make another, uh, another implied move on this because it technically is operating now as a a, an, uh, as a, uh, as a cup and handle as I try to search my words, but uh, let's see if I can map it out perfectly over here. Actually, funnily enough, bit, uh, Finex is a little bit of an outlier in comparison to the other um, exchanges, but we can do something like this. Pretty, you know, pr uh, pretty standard stuff from the bottom of the potential cup to the top of the right handle. And that actually be pointed us a little bit higher as well, actually into the five digits, perhaps. Yes, the $10,000 region or right below 10,000 bucks on uh, on stamps. So I do think that Bitcoin is going to have a chance to actually break above that critical region that I have outlined right here, right around about 97 to 9,800 bucks, which I do believe does really lead on into the higher term time frame and macro analysis. Actually, it's going to really set up Bitcoin for some pretty phenomenal moves. Uh, at least that's what I'm looking at right now. However, we'll get to that in a bit, but for right now, I want to focus still on the lower term time frame. So while we are here, let's look at our lower term time frame momentum oscillators, looking at the four hour stokes first, which are actually flip flopping around a little bit here. They will be coming down, but this is coming in line with a break of a former resistance now testing that support. So as long as you remain above there, I would look for constructive um, uh, signature within the four hour stokes. And realistically, you know, a lot of people, a lot of people look at the stokes in the same way that they look perhaps wrongly. I would, I would argue at the RSI, where it's just, it's too high, it can't go higher, bro, or it's too low, can't go fucking lower, bro, that kind of bullshit. That's not true. There's no such thing as overbought or oversold ever. There, you know, the price is what it is. If you're going to be a trader, if you're going to be a long-term investor, maybe you can make another argument for that. But more importantly, I'd expect this to get stuck between the edge of the bullish control zone, somewhere down around here, and the critical zone, which we're, which we're in right now, if this is going to operate with continuation over the short and medium-term time frames. And I want to look at the lower-term time frames, uh, sorry, below the four hour to kind of judge if there's any you know if there if there's any merit to that we should see like a little bit more of a mature signal and what do you know looking at the three hour right here getting stuck within this region looking like it's gonna have a chance to cross the upside and it will cross the upside with any sort of a bitcoin three hour closure above 9300 ish region let's look at the two hour what is the buy hourly saying well 9320 on that same area and we do see that the two hour is kind of wedging itself up into the bullish control of the region as well so as long as we close this next two hour, three hour, and probably even four hour dildo back above 9,300, looks like the momentum continues to the upside. And looking at the hourly just for good measure, it's actually technically up right now, resilient in this region after retesting the edge of the bullish control zone, holding up, bouncing where you'd kind of expect it to, maintaining the uptrend, and will remain to the upside as long as price action is closing on an hourly basis above 9,200. Um, on top of that, we are going to see the four hour historical volatility percentile come down and kind of re uh, reconsolidate here or contract is maybe maybe a better term you know i was look i was postulating this theory yesterday using some uh you know usually using kind of a regression coming in from my last high on this and matching it up with the with the moving average on the vault or sorry on the historical volatility percentile which is really 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 good this is again you know combining multiple different things can further confirm do you need all of them no moving average probably just gets it simple 20 uh period on this by the way and what do you know we do have an apex coming in actually uh right around the halving date or right around the 14th to 15th of um, of this current month, and I believe the halving is now four days away. So it's going to technically be on the 11th, and this becomes extremely statistically likely to break actually around here, around the 9th, uh, you know, starting around the 9th, and the 11th, I would say, is when it becomes extremely likely to break. So I do like these things are starting to line up with uh, with uh, with events as well. So we very likely will get a big massive move uh, in some direction, which is what people are going to hate. But that's what the TA is for, in the sense that we can come up with uh, critical zones that define biases and define momentum narratives. Anyways, moving on into the 12 hour, uh, or sorry, actually, before we do that, let's is, is there anything of note on the RSI? I'm sure that a lot of people are going to be calling this bearish divergence between this point and this point. On the 29th of April versus where we are right now, you could make that. Or I mean, technically speaking, you would be right in that. But the way that this RSI is kind of being cradled and having that nice uh, reaccumulation formation down here, where which also matches up with the price action just continuing this uptrend, I don't think it's going to operate like that. And very rarely do you see uh, bearish divergence or bullish divergence, for that matter, come at like this aggressive of an angle. Typically, it's going to come in, you know, around the top side of the bullish control zone. Those are usually the better signals, so to speak. But again, that just adds on to the fact that this is 
is a very good pivot point right here for the short and medium term, or I shouldn't say medium term time frames, but for the short term time frames. And I'm happy to be bullishly biased as long as Bitcoin's closing four hour dildos above 91.50. Now, if it were to close below, I would target a move back down to the low side of the range, uh, which is about 8,600 ish region to 8,700 ish region. And this is going to look a lot more mm, potentially bearish overall, at least setting up for a move down to uh, like 7,900 or 8,000 down around here at some point in time, using this as the next sort of triggering effect. But for right now, as you can see, this this area being backfilled and tested, I think that that op you know you have to go with the former assumption and also just go with simple trend uh, trend here as well. Now on top of that, going over to the medium term time frames, we got a, we got the 12 hour above all major moving averages. The 12 hour golden cross continues to gain more and more divergence away from each other. So I would say that that is overall a very good sign for the more medium and longer term time frame analysis. Doesn't mean that we can't have a nice comeback down. In fact, I do think that Bitcoin is going to have a nice big move down. Um, uh, probably, probably around the actual event itself. Uh, but looking at momentum oscillators, 12 hour stokes, fresh cross up, maintaining the bullish control zone. I really like that. And it will stay in the bullish control zone as long as we're above where, oh, it's fucking beautiful. This current potential local low that we're looking at that we're in the process of construction at 9,100, which is actually a nice 50 bucks lower than all the other critical um, errors that we saw from the low term time frame perspectives, which again, adds uh, confluence into the 9,100 to 9,150 ish region as a good bias changer for the very at least a short and even medium term time frames as long as bitcoin remains above it not really i'm not really bearish um for you know for anything more than just kind of like a backfill um and i'm not and i'm just generally looking for some more upside to kind of subside from that on top of that we do see 12 hour rsi is constructive here maintaining the bullish control zone bouncing off the bottom end of it i do like that as well so i would be overall i would i would be overall looking for this uh, looking for this rally to hit those upper targets right around 97 to 9800 as long as bitcoin is uh, as long as bitcoin's closing the this, this next 12 hour dildo back above, especially 9150, but even 9100, it still maintains this upwards composure. Now, here is the thing I do want to talk about a potential downside move here because, you know, at the end of the day, anything's possible. It's all, it's, it's a game of statistics, right? So that means just a matter of time before they come and boot fuck you in the back end and switch things around, which it's always they, by the way, too. It's like, it's, they don't have like an actual name. It's just they. It's just, it's, it makes it so much easier. They did it. It's their fault. It's them. It's definitely not me no technical analysis is perfect and if and if something goes wrong it's because they manipulated the charts against me those bastards fucking hate them uh <laughs> kidding for all the people who don't understand sarcasm out there um anyways uh looking at the 55 and the 200 yes we do have a very um interesting interplay between these two moving averages from a golden cross perspective on the 12 hour total time frame especially for bitcoin anytime that we've gotten the golden cross or the death cross for that matter doesn't necessarily get the immediate momentum well or sorry doesn't necessarily get the immediate entry well but it does get the momentum very well. Uh, for example, back on over here, Golden Cross between the 55 and the 200 comes back down and, and actually plays out a decent downside move from 9,000 to 8,000, but bounces on the next test of the 55 for about a $2,000 move, $2,500 move from 8,000 to 10, 10 and a half thousand. Same thing down, same thing over here for the downside, giving you a death cross pretty much right on the dump dildo. You know, it does give you a, a extra continuation even after the confirmation. Um, but again, timing that entry, mm, decent, although probably could have front ran it maybe with a 50 uh, moving average as that's technically your your golden cross and death cross uh, moving averages right there. Same thing on this guy right here, you know, it does get the mo does get the momentum well, gets a terrible entry, however. Um, uh, same thing right on over here from the switch up from 2019 on the breakout from this ma major accumulation area. Again, you know, big boost up, so not the best timer right there, but what happens after that comes back down, test the 55, and then boom, massive, you know, more than two. 2x rally off that area so you know you can you can back test the rest for yourself if you want to i can uh I can already spoil the surprise for you. If you go all the way back to 2015, 2016, you'll see one golden cross, and it basically takes you all the way from there to 20,000, from like 300 bucks to 20,000 uh, bucks, and then and then a couple more in the in the years prior, which I don't necessarily feel the need to go over right now because I don't want to look at long term analysis when it's not a long term long term analysis day. Anyways, so my point is is that at some point in time, I would be looking for a nice backfill along along at the very least the 21, which I, I I would argue that we've already gotten, but probably the 55 again from a historical narrative, you know. 
know, pretty much always does come back down and test that at some point, you know, within about a few weeks of getting the actual Golden Cross itself or, or, or maybe even as much as a month. Um, and more importantly, the longer that Bitcoin just kind of continues this upwards trend right now, that 55 will naturally travel up higher and higher. So it's not really until we start to break uh, back down below about 9,000 where, where I think that that becomes a legitimate uh, possibility where Bitcoin's going to, you know, shatter back down to the 55 and at the very least test it, probably bounce there. But until that happens, you know, I, I I would just keep it in the back of my mind, but it's not the foremost uh, thing in my mind, so to speak. Now, looking at, um, is there anything else of note here? Uh, 12 hour stock of volatility percentile. I still do believe that we're seeing the culmination of a two month long contraction phase, flipping into a uh, flipping into an expansion phase. And I do think that this is getting ready for a move here as well. Even though it has been down, the move and average on this continues to remain with the positive slope, which tells me that we're likely looking at another another splurt from this contraction phase going into this next expansion phase. I think that it's going to be, you know, be more um, uh, violent as time goes on. I don't think that it's fully played out yet. For example, anytime that we've had a contraction phase for at least two months, uh, like this guy right here, I guess I already have my trend line in there. Uh, this was this was the one coming in November 2018, by the way, which was this whole move to the downside right here. And what did it set up for? Well, it basically set up for this whole move from about 4,000 to 14,000. Is it always going to have that good of results? No. Is it? Does it always imply direction to the upside? Fuck no. Um, but uh, but more importantly, it does suggest that we are looking at you know a pretty damn big phase shift. Um, also, going back, where's the last one before this? You can go back over here, essentially. Same sort of thing on this move down from 12000 to 6000 before a nice, what is this, uh, 6000 to $10,000 move, $4,000 move right there. Pretty damn good. And before that, you know, you have several examples going 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 throughout this up uh, this upwards rally. Multi-thousand dollars of price action being spun off from that um, pretty much every time. This is what this uh, this this this, uh, this is what was driving my bias and looking for a big move at the end of last week. Even though my bias was technically to the downside during that time, uh, you know the movement itself made me very happy to be playing options towards that, which actually worked out pretty damn well. Um, so looking at this right here, you know we have gotten about a thousand dollar move from this so far, uh, from about eight thousand to fifteen to ninety five hundred, so fifteen hundred dollar move. But I do believe historically speaking, this would align with you know a bigger move overall. Uh, going over to the daily, daily is just falling through on an uptrend. And more importantly on the daily, the longer that Bitcoin remains above 8,000 bucks, the the more inevitable or the even faster the inevitable uh, golden cross between the green 55 and the, and the purple 200 will happen. So that would, I would estimate, happen um, probably around the 10th to 11th. Of, uh, of this month of May, assuming that, again, Bitcoin does not crash back down below, especially like 80, what is this, 8,600 right here. As long as Bitcoin's above 8,600 on a daily closing basis, I don't, you know, I, it, it's 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 going to inevitably happen sooner rather than later, probably in less than a week, actually. Um, looking at daily momentum oscillators, still looking good here, getting a little bit more mature. But again, you know, that is not a bad thing in and of itself. Um, just hard to keep up that momentum over time. But I really look for my RSI to denote when the, uh, you know, when, when the, when the overall rally is really losing its momentum because this does seem to be pretty damn impressive thus far and we don't necessarily have any bearish divergence just yet but it will very likely be forming um assuming that bitcoin gets another leg up to the you know maybe upper 9000s lower 10000s uh region uh we should start to make something that is resembling or, or potentially putting in divergence but it's still not there as it is right now it's still you know well and far away actually uh so bitcoin has a chance here to really do some damage to the upside if it wants to um, Moving on to the two-day, two-day looks constructive. Again, as we've been saying, this one's even this one's actually even better than the daily, in my opinion, because we are back above that white 200 simple, which historically speaking has been a good phase indicator for Bitcoin, uh, whether it's in a bullish phase uh, or a bearish phase. If it's if price action is both above that moving average and it has a positive slope, generally speaking, things are bullish as fuck. Actually, going all the way from Jesus Christ, man, going all the way from what is a seven bucks to. 1200 right here a 16 and a half thousand uh, percent gainer uh quite interesting and then back on over here you see that the slope flattens out gain, uh, gets a positive slope as bitcoin price action back tests and then rallies off it another 5000 or, or 5600 percent gainer right there pretty damn good from about uh, 350 tree 50 maybe uh all the way to 20000 bucks and then more recently it actually never even really got a tw uh, a negative slope on this move all the way down from 14000 to that to that 4000 dollar tick funnily enough and what do you know more recently it has retested this once twice and now 
getting fall through to the upside so i look at that as very as very good as well for the long term again doesn't mean that we can't have a nice downside move here and there i'm sure that we will but uh, but for the long term things are looking good here also making a high a, a new high above this last breakdown from early march that's kind of a big deal um momentum monsters are still pointed north here although they're going to be coming under pressure relatively soon so very likely you know we're going to find we're going to find a local top on this rally i do think on the next push very 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 likely um the huddle your long signal on the two-day jewel i think is mostly played out here does it have a little bit more maybe but this is coming all the way back from the 20th to the 22nd of april again not you know not even um what's it called uh, uh hindsight trading this one like even taking it after you know after the signal all the way from like 7200 to where we are right now you could say that it's mostly played out i do think um so what does this all mean? What does it all mean? <laughs> Nobody knows what it all means. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what it all means. Uh, but uh, so sorry, there's one more major thing that I forgot to mention here. Okay, so the two-day chart is very important, in my opinion, for Bitcoin, because, uh, especially for spot markets, because I believe it acts as like the daily for more traditional markets in, in taking that kind of like pull position for, you know, getting a good amount of the, of the medium and longer term price action. That's also relevant, for, you know, for a day trader. And what do we see here well not only are we going to be getting a golden cross very likely maybe even on the next tick which will happen later tonight at 8 p.m eastern time it will certainly happen on the tick after that on the 10th of uh, of may assuming that bitcoin just maintains above 8400 or, or wherever the 200 simple is but also we're going to see the 21 cross the upside of both of these moving averages as well so we're getting all the lower periods trending above trending above the higher term periods as bitcoin flips into an uptrend on this time frame we do have higher highs and higher lows after all and more importantly getting above the last major breakdown right over here if we can just confirm a two-day total closure above 9150 which by the way is also in line with the lower term time frames as we spoke about that's going to look very good um for, for for you know for the long term again as well um anytime that we've had you know this cross right here this death cross right here which was not really respected yes it did did receive an initial thousand dollar move to the downside you know which was 13 and a half percent pretty damn good but realistically when you're looking at a two-day dildo death cross you're looking probably for a lot more price action to be spun off from that um at least i was that's for sure uh when when that gets reverted almost instantly and then gets back above the 200 exponential mean average and hits it across at the other side that's usually indicating that it's going to run the other way as it's basically baiting you know baiting people into a trade over here and then boom switches them up uh right in over here soon after that uh which do we have any good do we have any good examples of this in past history not in this time frame no but you can find it on lower term time frames and the same sort of logic applies essentially except for higher term time frames well they hold more weight um, okay, so let's go back and I feel like there's something major that I'm missing. Yeah, I'm actually, I haven't really talked about the upside. <laughs> so while I do think that uh, Bitcoin likely does reach up towards 97 or 9800 ish region, that's where the next major resistance is that I have. Uh, does that mean that Bitcoin's destined to like, you know, push back there? I do think that there will be a short term pushback. Um, I received some interesting comments yesterday like, Crown, you're so silly. What? You're so <laughs> it's not silly. It's like stupid or retarded or something like that usually. Retarded in the scientific sense hopefully <laughs> um but uh but how could you think that things are just going to stop at 9600 it's going to go to 10,000 at the very least and 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 deep into the 10,000 and fuck you for saying otherwise it's like okay um well it's as you can see things typically happen slowly and it's better to err on the side of caution here um <laughs> you very rude interesting people um but uh but more importantly uh for the people who happen to give a fuck which is usually the majority of this community which is actually really 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 awesome um uh, we do see there's multiple pieces of resistance uh, kind of coming in around this level. So not only is it the measured move off of the lower term time frame, I, you know, I kind of had this as an ascending triangle here. I think it operates a little bit better as, uh, you know, as a cup and handle now. But uh, the measured move from that is coming in right around where? Right around about 97 and 9800 region. This is also the same breakdown order block and liquid zone coming in from the major breakdown in uh, in early March. Um, that went all the way from 9,000 to 4,000. And also the major rejection that we saw on this fake out in uh in late october as well during one of the pieces of, of the china news better seen on the weekly as you can see right here boom and then also talking about the same area right here this area is historically relevant is the is the picture that i'm painting at about 97 to 9800 ish region now on top of that we do see if we go back here we do see that there is a 618 fibonacci retracement coming around that region which you know usually gets respect in these markets and also the descending trend line which i usually don't care too much for except that it does meet up with horizontal so it further confirms it 
coming in from the $14,000 high at June 24th and connected with our last major rejection right here in uh, in middle of February on actually Valentine's Day. Beautiful. Um, and uh, all coming around the same area, also further verified by the volume profile, suggesting that there is activity within this region. Now, if Bitcoin were to close a daily dildo, and I really wouldn't lose use anything less than that right now, just because uh, that is such a macro area. If Bitcoin were to close a daily dildo above, let's call it 9,800, I do think that there'd be a quick run into the $10,500 region. I really don't see anything stopping you from retesting this prior high right here. That's where the weekly becomes incredibly interesting because the weekly is you know, going to be closing relatively soon uh, tomorrow for CME. So CMEs will actually have a chance to confirm this. Um, and if it closes anywhere, anywhere above this high, which is 10,500 on CMEs and 10,000, uh, 150 on spot price action. Um, and, but, you know, both relevant to their respective markets. If we get a closure anywhere above there, well, now we have a weekly potential uptrend in the making. Technically, I, you know, I, th I would feel quite confident just saying that, yeah, it's very likely to work as an uptrend. Uh, but technically speaking, you'd want to see a higher low being put in at some point. Bitcoin will come back down and set in a higher low. Everyone will call it, you know, really, really bearish and everything. Perhaps even myself as well, if I get carried away. Uh, but at the end of the day, you know, at you know, at the end of the day, uh, making a high above this major major fake out right here would be very good in constructing a long term uptrend. Which at that point, you know, I would generally target a move towards eleven thousand five hundred, and that's where the super macro can really change around. Because any sort of a weekly close above eleven thousand five hundred is just a massive change of behavior. That is where all the rejections for the last two almost three years, or no, two years, have been coming in from now, going all the way back to January two thousand eighteen, February two thousand eighteen, twice by the way, uh, July twenty nineteen. August 2019 and well that's that's where the volume profile uh, massively changes above there there is nothing doing above there and you could really see that Bitcoin is likely to just kind of float its way on to 16,000 20,000 and probably even beyond after that if it were to be hit but uh, again you know one thing before the next obviously I'm getting way ahead of myself here and I said I wouldn't talk about long-term price analysis so let's go back down start to curtail this off and uh, look at CMEs for a second CMEs um, looking okay here as well now there is one thing that actually could make me uh, more immediately bearish. And that's a 12 hour. Sorry, I forgot to mention this, but the 12 hour jewel is going to line up very likely for a decent sell signal. Not a super perfect one, but probably a decent one relatively soon. So I would keep an eye on that. If there's one thing that is making me cautiously bearish here for another move down to like 7,900 or 8,000, it's that. Although it's not actionable right now. Um, perhaps on the next tick or two, it could be. So we'll just have to watch that one in real time. Also, 12 hour uh, on um, on CMEs is going to be getting a golden cross probably in the next tick or two, assuming that price action especially remains above the 21. So again, using 87 or 8600 as base uh, looks more or less good. Um, but anything, but is there anything obvious on CMEs that we don't see on spot? Uh, CME is using the 200 on the daily to kind of bounce off of. I like that for constructiveness. Um, other than that, no, I don't really see anything obvious. Um, the obvious thing is that 8,600 is very important for the medium term downside. If Bitcoin does break 8,600 of the downside, I would be looking for, for an extension all the way down to 79 or, or yeah, about 7,900 region. But as long as we remain above there, I look at this as more or less a constru or potentially constructive rally with, with extreme constructiveness above uh, 9150 on a four hour total closing basis even probably a two hour gets it as well let's go confirm yeah probably does it um, probably does it or using this last local low right here at about 9,000 even that would be good enough for me to spin off a short-term move back down another $400 to 8,600 which at an $8,000 price point about 5% move pretty fucking tradable um, opportunity everywhere my friends anyways let's go check out traditional markets see how they're doing right now looking at NASDAQ futures first NASDAQ futures looking constructive kind of in the same way that Bitcoin is they have not uh, they have not made new highs as Bitcoin has so perhaps Bitcoin's actually leading here and I would say that strength you know strength in one uh, it typically equates to strength in the other although I would say traditional marks probably matter a little bit more overall but now you know NAS looking okay here as long as we remain above yesterday's low I look at this as short-term medium-term and long-term bullish probably for a move back up to about 9,300. Um, yeah, about 9,300 is where I'd be looking towards. Uh, and that would be further enhanced by any sort of move above this high right here. Uh, anywhere above 9,150, I would target another $150 move higher towards that 9,300 target and probably a short-term pullback right there. This one, again, constructive uptrend, higher highs, higher lows. Uh, good all the way through as far as I see it. And I don't see any real reason to be even medium-term or long-term bearish as long as it's above about 86. 
uh, let's call it 8,700 because it is rising. Um, if we were to break 8,700 to the downside, yes, I would get bearish for move all the way back down to 83 or, or 8,200 ish region, but I don't really think that's what's happening here. The weekly looks rather constructive as well, bouncing off very aggressively, I might add, above the 21 and maintaining a positive slope on all major move numbers that actually matter. Uh, so realistically, I don't really, you know, 9,300 is maybe even a little bit too conservative. I would actually extend that to maybe 94 or 90, 90, 94 or 95 region. Um, it looks it looks good here. I don't have any issues with this. Let's look at the monthly as well. Yeah, mo monthly just looks monthly looks good. I <laughs> I'm I'm sticking with what I've been saying for a while now, man. Uh, I think that the low is in. I think that uh, I think that this thing is 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 uh posturing posturing for a nice move um now at some point in time this one will come back down alongside e-mini futures as well for spy e-mini futures not nearly as strong but uh but any sort of move above not yesterday's high but uh but what would, what, what would it be tuesday's high at 89.89 spot 75 i'd look for extension back up to the prior high at uh 29.50 ish region and again same sort of thing here they probably operate in the same vein and then nasdaq uh pro or sorry nas futures probably leads to the upside if that does happen but as you can see here you know there is more there is more pressure here and i would say that um if if this week stalls out meaning that uh tomorrow's friday's closure comes like even anywhere below 28 uh 28 20 region i probably would be looking for it you know for another nice pullback into the 260 region like the the mid to low 260s uh coming into next week and the week after that but for right now it's gonna have a chance so i look for this one to confirm tomorrow and uh and put the weight on the medium and longer term uh price action from that as far as the daily goes though you know technically in an uptrend here maintaining those higher lows and higher highs uh, but needs to hold May 3rd low at uh, 2771. Otherwise, I'd look for this thing to uh, to have a very quick comeback down to 270 and then probably a small bounce there and then further continuation into the next couple of weeks down to the low 260s, um, at, which at which point we will come back and, and reanalyze size it um, and see what's going on. Uh, looking at Japan, Japan is more or less unched. It's also closed, so why am I looking at it? Who knows? It's I don't think it's been trading. Um, I think they're on holiday right now. Germany down 1.1%, uh, ending the ending yesterday a little bit lacklusterly. So perhaps if we are going to have some downside, you know, other other world markets are kind of suggesting that. Uh, India, um, India looks a lot more toppy to me. I India looks a lot more toppy to me actually. Um, but again, American markets typically set the tone. Uh, this is um, sound like a complete fucking arrogant American. Sorry about that. I do apologize, but that is what I found to be true in uh, in, in in trading markets. America typically sets the tone. Let's go look at gold really quick as well. Uh, gold looking to me like it's ready for a little bit of downside in the short to medium term, probably back down towards 1610, 1620-ish region. I wouldn't necessarily say that that would make me bearish overall. I'd actually look at that as like a massive opportunity. I do think that it will bounce off that region. Long term, I'm still bullish on it, looking for uh, 1800 probably 1800 plus like very long term um, but yeah short term I do think that this one's coming back down probably back down here towards the low 1600s um, what else do we have um, 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 GBDC do we even want to look at this looks good uh, do we have a new high no we do not but it's damn close uh, so let's go back and check out some of the other top shit coins Mr. Buterall Buterall Got, got a golden cross on the daily. Nice. Do we come back down and test the 55 first before getting before trying some continuation? Maybe. Um, it actually looks weak in the short-term time frames. Uh, actually looks very weak in the short-term time frames. Playing out a four-hour downturn right here, too. Um, I don't like that. Any sort of a four-hour even move below uh, May 3rd low at 195, or especially a four-hour total closure below 199, I would target a move actually all the way down here towards 187.5, 188, and perhaps that's even easier to get than Bitcoin's price action right now. So keep an eye on this one. If you do see that, I, I would look for Bitcoin to test back down to 8,600 and potentially set up for you know for 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 further continuation after that. Um, you know, even though this thing does have the golden cross, it might it might come back down and and fill here first, um, and, and a very obvious uh, actionable area there as well. More importantly, looking at Mrs. Litecoin, um, looks a lot more bearish to me as well. Uh, this actually is quite concerning. Um, looking at at a lot of the major alts, they are they're bearish. Uh, Mrs. Litecoin looks like absolute shit. Jesus Christ. What a fucking dog shit coin. All right, no, I'm sorry. They're very highly esteemed. Charlie Lee just sold his coins that you so that you could have more. So that you could have more. He's very generous. He's a very generous person. He loves you. He wants you to buy his Litecoins. And that's that. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh god man jesus fucking christ i can't believe there's still people with litecoin in their name after after all of that but uh fair enough everyone's entitled to their own views as far as the chart goes need to see it hold yesterday's low not even the third of may low which is actually well below already playing out a four hour downtrend too. lower lows lower highs uh any sort of a four hour closure especially below 44 bucks is very problematic and i would be looking for an extension actually much lower towards 40 dollars which at that price point is you know 10 percent move i mean it's pretty fucking massive uh this does not look good from a moving average perspective uh the weekly is in danger of getting a death cross so unless this thing gets like the green dildo from 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 godzilla it 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 doesn't look good. Now, if Bitcoin moves up here, is Litecoin going to move up as well? Yes, it's very likely to move up. It's going to do whatever Bitcoin does. But if Bitcoin comes back down to 8,600, this one will get pulverized quite uh, quite harshly. Um, and this one has some pretty obvious triggers as well. For the upside, uh, I just look at Bitcoin because this one's upside looks a lot more sloppy. Sloppy Joes. Um, okay, other than that, let's go back to Bitcoin. Let's talk about expected moves uh, with regards to historical volatility percentile. Uh, first and foremost, using 91.50 as kind of an action point for the short-term downside which we'll do right now okay let's go to current actually on this one do um upper target range uh no we actually want 9150 right here we can use the upper range at like 90 97 we can keep that um and we'll start off with the daily so the daily is obviously gonna have a very high probability that it closes uh woo, actually below the lower term target probability so technically speaking Almost 50% that it does close below 9150. I'm curious what the what the four hour says though. The four hour says 28 spot 9% uh, chance to close below the uh, uh, below 9150, which would relate to the downside in the short term being played out back down to like you know 86 or 8700 ultimately um, on the next closure. However, what if we switch this one around? What if we switch this one around and use the upper target range towards that and then lower towards still like 86? We'll call it. Um, now, of course, there the upper, you know, clo closing above the upwards target um, of, of 9150, which obviously we're above right now, so it should naturally be very high, is 71%. So it is more likely that we still maintain these higher lows here, even on the lower term timeframes. But that is a very critical area because it doesn't just relate to the lower term timeframes, but also, also the medium and even the higher term timeframes is where all of those, uh, all of those, all of those lows are coming in. So. So let's switch around to the 12 hour here. I want to see the 12 hour really, I really need to see the 12 hour close above at the very least 9,100 or 9,150 more aggressively. Uh, and there's a 50 spot 31% chance of that happening on the next closure by the same token below uh, 8,600 for 4%, although I don't think it'd happen in the next closure to be fair. Um, and realistically, the daily, of course, going to be pretty damn high as well. Uh, closing above there, 50%, closing below 8,600, uh, a little bit under 12%. So, you know, if things are going to switch around, that would be a damn good trigger is what that's showing. However, uh, probability is still on the upwards as I'm using that 9,150 last prior uh, local low to kind of denote a bullish bias. But technically speaking, um, working our way up to that next measured move, that next targeted area is, well, let's, let's see what the probabilities of hitting 9,700 are, um, or closing above there more accurately said. 13 spot 38%, which is actually, you're gonna think that that's low, but that's actually decently okay. That's a little bit outside of the first, uh, out of the range of the first innovation to the upside, obviously, but that is, you know, that's what you expect to kind of hit on a trending move. So I do think that that's actually in line and the below target probability for 8,600, mind you, 8,600 all the way down here, which would transpire that move, you know, another 700, 800 bucks lower to 7,900 ish region. Um, that is actually a less, a, a lesser probability than, uh, than hitting the upside macro area so that's going to do it for right now um i think that covers just about everything that i wanted to say maybe the video is a little bit longer than i intended uh like i said i'm going to do my best to be on twitch later if i'm not on twitch it's simply because i wasn't able to figure out my microphone situation so hopefully i can do that i'll do my best um because i really want to get back on there because it's really fucking fun uh but i should remind myself also that twitch is you know it's mo mostly focused on gaming and whatnot so if that doesn't interest you then it might not be the best fit but uh, but for anyone who who's cool with that you're more than welcome to join on in, and uh, I'll see you in the next one. Take care.